Hello everyone, Ganon here, and welcome to my first ever episode of Does It Hold Up? I know this is different from what I normally do, but I felt like it was time for a change. Now I bet you're thinking, what is Does It Hold Up? Simply put, it's a review of all our favorite childhood video games, broken down into a few categories. The first category will focus mainly on the story, followed by the second, which will focus mostly on game mechanics and any cool tricks I can pull off. Then the third category will focus mainly on extra game modes. I figured it would be better if, we, if I look at other game modes after going over the game mechanics to give you a better overall idea of the game flow. Then, we'll wrap it up with the big question. Does it hold up? So now that I've given you the basic rundown, tell me down below what you think of this form of content, and let me know what game I should cover next. Oh yeah, really quick, don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the content. Now, without further ado, let's answer the question. Does Dragon Ball Z Budokai 2 hold up? Okay, this game's story mode is interesting to say the least. I feel that the game board gimmick is actually a really refreshing take on the story mode, but I have this strange feeling I'm alone on this take. Anyways, our story begins with... Um... Nappa and Raditz? Excuse me? So, this is the planet where Kakarot is supposed to be. Yeah, and those Dragon Ball things have to be on this planet as well. First, how about we exterminate the people on this planet with the Cybermen? Ha ha ha, this soil should grow some fine Cybermen. Raditz, you hunt for Kakarot. I'll search for the Dragon Balls and deliver them to Master Frieza. Right, so for some reason, instead of implementing the same story one-to-one, -one, they decided to mix it up and give us something different, if you want to call it that. Though I don't believe it's that bad, to be honest. Anyways, this is the character select for the story. Essentially, you pick your own helper that allows you to unlock certain skills and other characters. But we'll go over that more later. For now, let's focus on the story. Our mission is simple to start. All we have to do is get the Dragon Ball before Nappa. And let me tell you, it was a breeze beating up Nappa and Raditz with Piccolo. He is by far my favorite character so far. Even though we've just started. Another thing I like about this game are the character interactions. Check this out. These things are actual gold. Can't you talk for real? You really are a strange one, huh? You're a Namekian, huh? Disgusting insect! Unless you'd rather die, stand aside right now! Insect, huh? Well, be careful because this insect bites hard. But now that Nappa and Raditz are defeated, and the Dragon Ball is secured, we can now move to the next story zone. Alright! I got the Dragon Ball! Time to go looking for the next one! It looks like Nappa and Raditz have been done in. I guess it's up to us, the Ginyu Force, to take care of this once and for all! Okay, so I'm gonna be real with you. I have zero clue why Frieza and the Ginyu Force are on Earth before the Namek Saga. But, uh, I'm gonna let them cook. <laughs> Whatever. Well, bad story logic aside, all we do for this mission is force Frieza to flee. And also, which is completely optional, but I still do anyways. 
is continue the hunt for the Dragon Balls. What's the incentive, you ask? Stick around and find out later. Rakuma and Genyu were a piece of cake. But Huize, on the other hand, was the most aggressive enemy I've fought so far. Honestly, I'm really liking the change in pace. I thought I'd steamroll until at least I got the Namek, but apparently not. Sadly, our victory against Frieza is short-lived, due to him managing to escape headed towards Namek to make his wish to become immortal. Well, uh, at least we're sticking to canon material now, right? Right? We arrive on Namek with a nice surprise. Vegeta finally makes his entrance, but unfortunately, he's in the way, and the Genyu Force isn't too far behind him. Let's see why Vegeta's stopping us. Kakarot, it's you! This is perfect! Before I defeat Frieza, I will dispose of you! Vegeta, this isn't the time for us to be fighting! If we don't get rid of this Frieza guy, things are going to get awful! Grumble all you want, but do it after you fought me! Just this once, I'm going to help you out. Otherwise, I'm afraid we won't beat Frieza. But don't you forget, someday, I will settle the score between us. Yeah, I gotcha. Now that the prince has been properly rehabilitated onto the side of good, we can focus on Frieza's forces now. Captain Genyu was a total joke, probably the easiest fight I've had so far. Raccoon, we cleared him out in no time. But suddenly, after defeating him, Frieza powers up. I'm pretty sure that certain enemies in this game can power up based on many different situations, like Frieza losing the Genyu Force, for example. It, but it seems like Frieza's ready to talk. Let's see what he has to say. You again? Don't tell me. You're a Saiyan too? Yeah, I'm a Saiyan from Earth. I see. I once killed a Saiyan on planet Vegeta that looked like you. You're his son, huh? How fun. You'll get to share his fate. For the sake of all the people you've killed, I'm going to beat you! After that powerful declaration from Goku, we've got to defeat Frieza now. Honestly, these fights were all very close and could have went to Frieza. But we pulled through and saved Planet Namek. Darn it! Darn it all! I won! If it comes to me being killed by you, then I'd rather die by my own hand! But I am not going to die! You are the ones who will! I'm going to destroy this planet! Yikes! If I don't get out of here soon, the whole planet's going to explode! Here it is! With this spaceship, I'll escape from Planet Namek! <laughs> I finally found you, Goku! Who... who are you? Hmm... I am Dr. Zero, the scientist of the Red Ribbon Army, which you destroyed! Red Ribbon Army? That's right. Thanks to you, the Red Ribbon's dream of world domination was wiped out, and only I remained. Come! <laughs> Uh, Cyberman! Mm, I've selectively bred this sample to create my elite unit. Oh, no! Now go, my Cyber Rangers! Do away with Goku!
All right, we finally made it to the Cell Saga, and for once, it actually feels like canon. Kind of. Our first encounter is with Dr. Jiro, with his new addition to his army, the Power Rangers. Wait, sorry, I, I meant the Cyber Rangers. Totally different. Can you blame me, though? Just look at them. Anyway, after successfully nuking Dr. Jiro off the face of the planet, we encounter the androids. 16, 17, and 18. Let's see if they have anything interesting to say. I am an android created to kill you. Goku, I am going to kill you. I can't let myself be defeated here. Sorry, but I'm going to have to win. Could you tell me where Goku is, my guy? I what? Are you nervous? How cute. <laughs> so, where is Goku then? Oh, uh, well, you see, uh, uh actually, that, uh, uh, well, uh, I can't tell you. Hmm. Well, I have no choice but to force you to tell me then, huh? Big W from Krillin, by the way. See ya. Are you here too, Piccolo? You may not be quite up to the task, but you can still help us kill some time. Huh, enough of your smart mouth. I'm gonna finish you right here. Hmm, you're just like the saints, full of foolish pride, aren't you? Very well. Ordinarily, I wouldn't lower myself to take on the likes of you, but this time is special. Don't think it's gonna be so easy. Honestly, I really like the dialogue in story mode right now. It's cool because you have to try different character combos to get certain interactions. Like this one, if you beat 16 before the other androids, Cell absorbs them right away. Pretty cool, right? After that dramatic entrance in Cell, he invites us to the Cell games. There's no map change, but the fight is definitely makes up for it. It's decent for the mid-game. Once defeated though, Goku and Piccolo sense a mysterious energy and fly off to locate it. You're here, Goku. What's this? I sense a strange energy. It would seem the energy we sense was from a being known as Supreme Kai. Let's see if Gohan has anything to say to him. Surprisingly, nothing. But since Supreme Kai was seen as such a huge threat for me, I decided to teach him what the inside of a mountain looks like. But then suddenly, the wizard Bobbity appears with his plan of resurrecting Majin Buu. At last, someone with strong energy has arrived. <laughs> Even Master. <laughs> this one has a heart filled with evil. I'm going to make good use of you. Great! Great! You're mine now! <laughs> While I'm at it, let me raise some of the evil thoughts that linger in your memories! After revealing his plan, Bobbity attacks Vegeta's mind, turning him into Majin Vegeta. Bobbity's plan isn't done just yet, for he summons two other allies to help him in battle.
Have I been brought back to life? What is this? <laughs> if these guys inflict damage on their opponents, it will become energy toward Martin Fu's resurrection! I really think Majin Cell and Frieza are a good addition to the game. Not because it has to make sense, just because it's fun. And I think that's kind of the idea behind this Dragon World when they were making it, is just that fun. Or they had some serious time crunch. Even with all these powerful fighters, I simply walked past them with no resistance at all and stopped Majin Buu from resurrecting. We follow Bobbity to a temple in the sky, but run into Majin Vegeta, who was extra pissed since we didn't fight him. In fact, I think I see him coming. This is no time to be fighting, Vegeta! Our energy will be transferred to Majin Buu! Buu, what do I care? That has nothing to do with our fight! Everyone is going to be killed! Everyone! Including Bulma and Trunks! Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! I sold my mind to Bobbity in order to eliminate such weakness! Vegeta, cut it out! This is really not the time for us to be fighting! Stop your blabbering, coward! I won't let you squirm your way out of this! I've waited too long! Fine, but the more we fight, the more energy we send to Majin Buu! You leave me with no choice but to use my full power so I can end this quickly. That's it. That's what I want. Let's go, Kakarot! Well, after knocking Vegeta's lights out, Bobbity finally gains enough energy to resurrect Majin Buu. Well, after Bobbity's demise and all of that moaning from Cell, Frieza, and Vegeta, we demolish Fat Boo and go on with our day. What did you expect? But then he suddenly transforms into Super Boo?
Martin Boo! Ha! I knew it! Bring out the guy who's going to fight me! He has to be here! I know there's a great power here! It's nowhere else! Darn, they've been training so hard to defeat Majin Buu, but I never thought he'd come into the hyperbolic time chamber! I want to fight against someone strong! That's what makes it fun! Bring him out! I've got no choice. Goten, Trunks, get ready! Okay! Dum da dum dum. We've been waiting for you, Majin Boo. You two are the strong guy? That's right! You're finished, Majin Boo! You Jun Ha! All right, great! The fusion worked! Bum 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 bum! It's Gotenks! We end up going to the time japer so Goten and Trunks can train and learn the fusion dance to stop Super Boo. But before we go farther, I want to show you something cool. I like your head! I think I'll take it! What? Ah, uh, only in a game like Budokai 2 can you see fusion antics like this. Or absorption in this matter. Pretty neat, right? We beat Boo back, but before leaving, he manages to absorb Gotenks and flies off. Now, I'm going to absorb you! Remember this. I'll be back for you. Don't run away, Majin Buu! Gohan, what are you doing here? I thought you were dead! Sorry to worry you, Dad. I've been training with the Supreme Kai. In any case, I'm here now. Let's go defeat Majin Buu. When we enter the city, we find Gohan with Supreme Kai facing off against Buu Tanks. Don't tell me you intend to fight me! No, I intend to kill you. You're gonna have to face me now. I... I will not let any power be stronger than mine! And after a very close fight with Bootanks, we just barely managed to fend him off. But the worst has yet to come. I'm asking you, all of you, please save the universe. With no other choice, we have to stop Kid Boo before it's too late. Oh, it's a good thing he's flying right at us. Wait a minute.
Let's fight! Darn it! Even though we're doing the same thing, that monster isn't losing any strength! Uh, uh, uh. This... this power's gotten even greater! Ah! This time I'll finish you for good! Well, this was definitely a tough fight, but after a few tries, we finally managed to defeat Majin Buu and save the universe. Well, you know, at least until Super's canon, but whatever. And with that, we wrap up the story mode for Dragon Ball Z Budokai 2. Honestly, it's pretty fun. Sure, the story isn't very consistent canon-wise, but... The non-canon stuff is actually pretty enjoyable if you just turn your brain off for a few minutes. I don't see the big deal in it. But I just have this feeling I'm forgetting something. What could it be? Right, the Dragon Balls. Since I collected them all, we can summon Shenron. But you can only make three wishes. I'd recommend taking the breakthroughs so you have access to all the characters' moves. Probably the move. I don't think you need Bulma's outfits. Now with Shinron gone, I think it's about time we get into the game's mechanics. Let's see how the game plays. Now that we finished the story, let's take a brief look at the dueling screen. I know it's technically a game mode, but I just felt like I needed a quick explanation. This is the menu just for picking the amount of players participating in battle. The same applies to World Tournament as well. This is the character select screen where you can customize their loadouts and change their outfits as well. Here are some of my favorites with my live reaction. All pretty nice, right? Do-rag, bro. The do-rag hits. That's kind of a crispy recolor. 16 is just different colors. Ooh, the Capsule Corp Gray 16. That shit hits. Captain- Oh yeah! <laughs> now that we've taken a look in dueling, let's head to practice mode to understand the game better. Okay, here's the basic movement. Left on the D-pad will move you back, while right will move you forward. These can be flipped depending on where your opponent is. Press X and up, or X and down, to shift. Double tap left or right to dash forward or skip backwards. Basic punches. Punch, punch, punch. Punch, punch, punch. Now let's do a kick. Kick, 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 kick. Pretty cool, right? You can angle these punches too, like this. See, it's different from a regular punch. Even kicks have that too. Get your regular kick, front kick, back, hit, kick, kick, basic key blast, key blasts also have directional inputs, but they make you use key attacks, like uh, Buster Cannon, or Finish Buster, pretty cool right? When you hold X and double tap back, depending on where your opponent is facing, you charge up your key. And you can charge it all the way up to six full key bars, and then your aura is flaring. You can also perform power attacks by hitting punch and kick when you knock an opponent into the air. It's pretty much the same as on the ground, except there's knockdown physics involved with power attacks and combos. 
You can also interact with the environment as well. Perfect. Now that we're in a more open area, I'll show off Super Saiyan. Well, I got Super Saiyan too because I'm a goat at trunks. This is Super Saiyan. Punch, kick, and guard make you transform. Pretty simple. You have your basic four hit punch combo into your, your uh, key blast attack, which makes you do a buster cannon at the end. These are just basic combos that you can input to deal a massive amount of damage instead of just doing the regular variant. Now these attacks right here are special. Burning attack and burning slash are special moves. I'll show you them right now. Well, not right now. After I show you the whole list. We're going to be doing all this. Just to give you an idea how the combat flows. Let's show that again. Simple. Then it's... See the difference in damage? Energy burst. Pretty simple. Burning attack. We're gonna do the failing variant of burning attack first. Burning attack! Winning variant. Burning attack! difference is the amount of damage you do. Now the burning slash. We're gonna do the winning variation first, then the losing. The difference between the two of them is the amount of damage they deal. When you successfully perform it, you deal, I believe, a full health bar. When you fail, I think it's only like 800. I'll do a failing variant first. Oh, the, the feeder doesn't do anything. Normally they dodge. I know this next one's side punch. Energy burst. And that basically sums up every move a character can do in the game. Yeah, just showing you one character basically shows you them all. But of course they have their own like variations between them, but this is the basic skeleton of the every character and their move list. But now that you have a grasp of the basic combat system, let's check out the other game modes. We're back in Dragon World. I know we just came from here, but I just want to show you how basic movement on the map works and all the funny tricks and kinks it has. You can move the arrow on the map to determine where you're going to go, then you hit X or A and select where you want to go. When you land on top of an item, that's placed on a particular point on the map. You can pick it up and gain whatever the boost is for it. In this instance, we get the Dragon Radar, which helps us identify where the Dragon Ball is. The Sword and Saiyan Armor gives us about 10% to 30% boost to attack and defense, depending on which one you get. You can also look at the spot that you're currently on to see if there's any items hidden beneath you. For instance, 
you can find swords or the Saiyan armor or dumplings. The dumplings are pretty good in my opinion because they give you two extra moves. Sometimes you can get lucky and even find three. Oh, and you can also find money, but who cares? Dende will appear on maps spread throughout Dragon World. Whenever you land on his spot, he'll give you one extra health, health bar. Essentially an extra life. Whenever you land on a half heart symbol on the map and an enemy interacts with you, or you interact with an enemy, you'll have to fight under a special condition known as half health. Pretty self-explanatory. I'll show you how it starts out though. I'll do this for the other battle types as well. Since the first Dragon Ball is pretty easy to find, I'll show you how the Dragon Radar works when the Dragon Ball is not out in the open. Pretty simple, whenever you're on top of it, just search and you'll find it. So on Dragon World, after you defeat an enemy, they become dizzy. Once they're dizzy, if you beat them again, you'll instantly take off two more HP bars. Pretty simple. Be aware that sometimes when looking for items, you won't find anything. The power-up symbol with the zero in it just means you're starting with zero key. Let me show you what the menu looks like. On certain maps, you'll find Mr. Popo just chilling on his carpet. If you land on his space, he'll teleport you to he'll teleport you to a set location on the map. On this guarding symbol, we can we're not allowed to guard. Plain and simple. Yep, you can't be defensive here. Keep attacking. Never land on this when you're fighting an actual strong enemy. That's my advice. As you can see, I'm trying to guard. It's not working. You don't even tense. Last but not least, when you land on a spot with a key charging symbol and an arrow down, it means it's a key drain spot. Wouldn't recommend fighting bosses on this either, but it does like limit them to mostly just basic attacks and autos. Let's check out the game modes now. Okay, now we're gonna go into World Tournament. World Tournament is simple. It's just like the other World Tournaments and every other Dragon Ball game that exists. On this menu, you select your difficulty, then move forward. We only have Novice right now because we haven't beaten any of the other ones. But it'd be the same. It'd be Novice, Intermediate, and Advanced, or Expert. One of them. After you pick a character, you're placed in a bracket, and then your job is to fight through the bracket and get to the top to become the champion. At the end of the tournament, if you win, you gain a Zenny prize. Now that we briefly covered World Tournament, let's we check out Bobbity's spaceship. Okay, let's start with Stage 1. In Stage 1, all we have to do is keep defeating an opponent that is endlessly revived by Bobbity. Also, after every mission you complete in a Bobbity mission, you gain Keely. With Keely, essentially all you do is unlock new abilities and skills. Stage 2 on Bobbity's spaceship is also pretty fun in my opinion. It's it, pretty much all you have to do is survive. It's just a survival game. You, the enemy has no HP, and you just have to run the clock up as high as you can before dying. I think it's pretty fun. The third stage of Bobbity's spaceship is basically just hit the opponent as much as you can before the time limit runs out. I think this is a pretty challenging uh, game mode, but not my favorite at all. It's just not for me. The final stage of Bobbity's spaceship is probably my favorite. All we have to do is deflect Key Blast back and forth. Not just deflect them away from us, but back at the enemy. Basically, we're just playing ping pong with key balls. It's, it's uh, pretty addictive once you get the timing down. Okay, really quickly, since I forgot to do this earlier since I was using trunks, I'm going to show you how fusion works. It's essentially the same no matter what fusion you do. You either get a positive outcome or a negative. And we're just going to show the positive because the CPU won't attack back unless I change the settings. But you get the idea. Hercule, catch! Get down here! What was that? You mean like this? 
Oh, man. All right, now that we've gone over the story, mechanics, and modes the game offers, it's time to ask the big question. Does it hold up? And I'd have to say yes, it does hold up. This was a very solid experience, even with the questionable story mode. I honestly can't see why it didn't get added to the Budokai collection. Truly a tragedy of this generation. It's very easy to collect skills and upgrade characters. Combat-wise, it feels great, just like any other Budokai game. The game offers many characters with far superior flashy skills than the last game. And it offers Bobbity Spaceship. I might have a slight bias towards this game, but I feel like with what I've shown, Dragon Ball Z, Budokai 2 definitely still holds up. And with that, I've officially finished my first ever game review. This was such a fun experience playing through Budokai 2 again. It reminds me more of when I was a kid playing on my box TV in the living room. <sighs> Memories. I'm planning on doing more of these reviews in the future. Yes, give me some time to, get to, to do some scripts. I'm still getting good at that. Anyways, thank you so much for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to like and subscribe for more. Also, hit that bell to never miss a notification. I am planning on doing more reviews in the future. Just give me more time. I'm still getting used to the whole script writing thing. So, well, uh, you know, when videos come out, they'll come out. But I'll try and be consistent. I promise. Anyways, catch you guys later.